pertaining to the dress or pertaining to the many external factors. I felt it had a very, the mood is very nice that we want to empower women, but we should understand the real meaning of women empowerment. Is it just so external, dealing with our behavior or with our life choices or our dressing style? Is women empowerment only restricted to just such external matters or is it something more deeper? So today, this topic I chose is just so that we can understand ourselves better as women and as women who belong to the great nation of India, we have a responsibility. So I thought that let us discuss what is this, uh, these thoughts, how we can use it so that we can become, we make the right choices in life and become happy. So all these type of movements such as this my choice movement or women empowerment or, or the feminism movement, feminist movement, you know what feminism? The feminist movement is is a struggle which since is going on since 17th century, 16th century. It's like since the time women have become aware of their position, there is a constant struggle going on in all over the world, not just India. Feminist movement is, is feminism, is actually a range of movements and ideologies that share a common goal to define, establish and achieve equal political, economical, economic, cultural, personal and social rights for women. This is the movement which began many centuries ago and it's going on all over the world. The history if you read about feminist movements, they all began with, at least in the western world, for the right to vote. Women had no right to vote. So in the western world there was a great struggle for women to just to get a right to vote. They were not even given the position of a citizen of the country to vote. And more closer to home in India, as you see, during the British time, now we see that women had to struggle for basic right to education. So why do such kind of movements arise in the first place? Why did this thing happen in the this? Why women had to struggle so much just to get a power to work or a right to study, uh, to uh, educate, education, which is a human right. You know, every individual should have that uh, facility to study or uh, learn or educate or make their own choices. But this, at the all the time when there was not even this basic this. So because of such kind of such movements arose because there was a great lack in the society for giving women the equal position. But if you study the Vedic scriptures, if you see our Indian scriptures, according to our Vedic scriptures, always women have been given not just an equal, in fact a superior position. Don't you think so? Can you read what is our Indian culture say about women? Women represents Shakti. Have you also heard this word Shakti? Shakti means what? Power, right? So women have been given a position not as equal, they have always been respected as the source of all power and source of all energy. That's what our daily culture is. But such movements arise mainly because when men think that they are the pushers or the controller and such people in the society, when they are not able to follow this high ideal of giving the rightful position to a woman, giving, them, giving her the position of respect and honor and not even giving them the basic needs of what a, a human needs. That's when such kind of movements arise. But 
we have come a long way, right? Is today the situation like that? What do you think is today's situation? So agreed, they had to struggle a lot, they had to start feminist movements and fight for their rights and they had to become aggressive. Why? Because they were being deprived, right? But now, in the modern day, do we need to be feminists so strongly? Because we are getting equal opportunities. We are getting everything, you know. Because in so many fields, women have become much more progressive than men. You agree? We are all doing much better than men. Huh? You agree? I like about women. When we get together, we like to talk about us and how great we are. <laughs> I think that's very needed, right? Yeah, mutual admiration society. You are great. All of you are great. It's such a nice feeling to be a woman, right? So why should we waste our energy in trying to be feminists? <laughs> because we can achieve everything just by being feminine. Do you agree with that? How I tell you. Hmm? In today's day and age, just by being feminine, I mean being aggressive, feminist and trying to fight for equal rights for everything, in fact it becomes more difficult for a woman because we try to take on not our roles, not only our roles, we want to take even the roles of the men. So it's like you have to work ten times harder. That's what is happening today, but it's fine, we are happy doing that. But we can do so much just by sticking to our feminine qualities. It's like so many times we see, if we fight for equality and we intend, men will say, okay, then fight, fend for yourself. But I've seen so many times in buses and trains when we, we have a special sitting area for men, women. If any man sits there, have you seen that? We make them get up, right? Or they see us immediately, they get up on their own. That's the power of the woman. <laughs> so we don't have to compete with men actually. Because we can make them get up anyways. <laughs> and it's not that we have to show that we are feminist. It's just because we are a woman, we don't have to get up. And that's not something uh, it is a show of respect for the woman. A show, it's a gentlemanly behavior that makes them also happy and you are also happy. Isn't it? So it's a win-win situation. Agree? Isn't that a smart thing to do? To always be a woman. Proud woman. Proud to be a woman. Isn't it? Rather than trying to be feminist and trying to say we are want to be equal to men. In my mind, I feel I'm better than a man. Why should we be equal? Or rather let them think that we are equal, but actually we are better. And that's how very women were. They were very, very intelligent. That's what the uh, basic concept of a gay and an Indian was. The Shastra explained that we are two different entities. Men cannot be women, women cannot be men. Because each has their own role. Can a man become pregnant? However, they make that how much of a science progresses, I don't think they can ever do that. Yes or no? So that's only our role to be We are powerful because we can produce life. We can bring a life into this world. That man can never do. Whereas women can do everything what a man does. Almost. Except shaving him. So we are different. We have our roles to play. And if we stick to our roles, it will be a women's speech. Because the women will be happy by following their feminine nature. We can make men do whatever we want, just by being 
Lincoln. And men feel like they are protecting the woman, so they are happy also. You understand? That's what is the nature of a woman, right? She needs protection. She needs care. She needs you know, to be provided with everything. That is the need of every uh, human. There's nothing to or any person who is, uh, you know, every person needs all those things. It's like the basic needs. Whereas a man, nature is, you know, to provide, to protect. But wherever there is an imbalance, okay, men are not capable enough to give protection or care to the woman or when they start taking the position of a controller, they think that because we are, you know, physically strong or because they are the providers we can control over, you know, who are under us, women who are under us, that's when this imbalance occurs in the society. But this is not what our Indian culture or Vedic culture has ever propagated. You know, this is, the Vedic culture always speaks about men as protectors and providers and women as the nurturers. We are the nurturers. By our soft, warm nature, we can keep the whole family together. Isn't it? Have you heard this statement? A woman can either make or break. There have been many instances, just like we just saw in the drama. Right? Everything was going so nice. Huh? But she had the power, Katie had the power over Dashrath Maharaj, a mighty king who was like the ruling the whole world. But she had so much power to make, you know, to break everything that he stood for, all his values, everything. His, the entire family was destroyed just by one woman making the wrong choice. So you understand how important it is. How big a responsibility is. With choice comes responsibility. So definitely we may think that we have to always struggle to become get equal position or equal rights as men. But the Vedic scriptures never spoke of never uh, Vedic Vedic scriptures always about women and women as having their own position and role. And if we stick to that role, we will be happy. And there have been such powerful women. Anyone can give some examples? Hmm? Yes, Ramayashi Bhai. She didn't have to wear pants, but she was as brave and as anybody else, right? She was equal or better than any man because she was single-handedly she fought against the entire British army. And not only that, she was with her baby, she tied her baby on the back and she was doing it. She was, she was so brave. Being a woman, she protected and still she was, uh, you know, fighting. Rani Lakshmi. Any other example? Yes, in the spirit, in the uh, field of uh, social work and welfare and mother Tureja is always known. Why? Because she used her feminine nature of nurturing and caring. She made the right choice in her life and she chose to serve, which is, it comes naturally for us, right? For women, it's our nature that we like to serve, we like to give love, warm, and that is our role. And somehow, how much ever in India we make progress, it's we, the women of India are naturally like this. How much ever people may say, oh, we are modern and this, but I've seen every 
women who's working for their industry careers, still they go back home and they are there for their money. Isn't it? Even the big CEO of big, big company, Indira Nui, she is the CEO of Pepsi. She is such a big position, but she says that every evening when I go back home, I have to be there taking the homework for my family, for the children, cooking, seeing that you know, they are fresh. This is natural nature of a woman. You understand that? We make progress in different fields, we may become career women or so women now because we have equal opportunity today. Today we don't have to be a feminist as well. So let's keep feminism, feminism aside and let's go ahead in life being a proud woman and fulfilling all of the responsibilities of the woman. So we have many women who have shown in their life that against all odds they have fought, against all odds and they have come up victorious and they have fought for the rights, their own rights and to help other you know, people who are mean. This is real women empowerment. You agree? Isn't it? So I would like to tell one story. I have selected some stories which of women who have shown you know, that how women can be really empowered in a true sense. So as we give the example of Rani Lakshmi by the list, we have a long history of their you know, fighting or struggling to get freedom from the Mughals first and then from the British. There's one such lady who is known as Bibi Sharan Kaur. This is during the Mughal invasion. That is much before the British invasion. And this was during the regime of the last king of Punjab. That is Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Maharaja Ranjit Singh. He was the last king of Punjab. And she was an ordinary girl, a simple village girl like anyone, you know, and she got married. And on the day of her marriage, when she was going to the village of her husband, the entire marriage party was attacked by decoy. And the decoys abducted her and all the other relatives just left her and ran away. And the husband was also attacked and he was helpless and he didn't know what to do because she was abducted and she was taken. And so at that time Ranjit Singh uh, Singh's general was a very famous person called as Hari Singh Nalwa. And he was a very powerful person. So he ran to him and begged him that please save my wife. She has been abducted by the black boys. And he sent his own soldiers and um, rescued her from the black boys. And then they both, the husband and wife, came before him. They begged him that now we don't want to go back to the village to our relatives who, you know, left us in a time of our need. We want to surrender our lives to in serving the country. So she started working, uh, she was uh, taken in as a soldier in the army. Can you imagine at that time a woman becoming a soldier and she was trained in the, to become a soldier and not only that she was trained to become a spy. And she did the amazing, you know, daring of Going to the enemy camp, the Mughals had attacked and the, they were the Pathans and she went into their camp dressed as a uh, Pathani woman and she uh, assassinated the main leader and very quietly escaped with all the knowledge of whatever is the war uh, strategy and she came back and such many such things, brave things she did and because of which from 
we can see that from a simple village girl, she was empowered and transformed into a soldier. And she served in the army and helped the country in so many ways. This is one example and you must have heard of Salitri Bhai Pule. She is the wife of Jyoti Bhai They were both very simple people from the village. They were themselves from the you know, lower caste and they were facing so much opposition and so much exploitation and oppression at that time. But Mahatma Pule, he against all odds, he was fighting for helping the poor people and the needy people at that time. And she took up the cause of educating the women because she saw that the only way that the girl, the women can come up is by education. But at that time it was an unheard thing. So she started her own small school in her home. She used to start teaching. She was herself uneducated, but she educated herself first so that she can teach the women. So she is actually the pioneer of women education in India. So if we all are now studying in universities and studying, so she had to go through so much opposition that people used to throw stones on her and throw thousands on her face whenever she would go to the school to teach. Again, so much opposition, she worked hard to help women to educate them. Another great personality who I have had a good fortune to meet is Kiran Devi. Have you heard of Kiran Devi? She is an icon. Actually, she is a youth icon. She is so inspiring person. She was known as Train lady, you know why? Because she was, when she was posted as the, uh, in the Delhi police for the traffic control, she tore the car away of Indira Gandhi, the Prime Minister of India at that time. Because it was parked in the wrong place. Can you imagine what drugs you need for that? So she was, she is an amazing person. She was the first person who started in Tihar J programs to rehabilitate those prisoners, such as meditation and uh, counseling and helping the patients to become uh, the, pris the prisoners, the criminals to become to rehabilitate them. So she's a real hero in this day because she has the guts to stick to the right path and make all the right choices in life. So she is an inspiring person. So this is just two examples to show that we don't have to really become competitors to men. Because we are naturally gifted with so many qualities. And with all those qualities, qualities that we have, we can make a difference. We can make a real difference in people's lives. So there are many such examples of inspiring women. These are the modern day examples. But let us discuss this week, this idea or this concept of my choice, this video that was come up. We spoke about women empowerment in such a superficial way. Whether I wear a mini skirt or whether I wear, it's, it's completely my choice. It's, is it something related to the dress only? Is it as superficial as just the dress? I can still have an attitude or attitude of a free person or a confident person, even if I keep covering my body fully, right? Has it anything to do with dress? Why should we? Change our culture, our Indian culture of where women is seen or respected equally to the level of a mother. Why should we change our concept of our lady culture just to show that we are free women? 
We have such examples, such beautiful history of glorious women in our culture who, who by keeping their feminine qualities were so powerful. In fact, it is that by keeping, by following our feminine qualities or by developing or working towards developing our feminine qualities, that's how we get strength and empowerment to achieve big things. We can achieve so much just by doing that. So, so in this video, many things were spoken about basically women have a choice whether to have affair before marriage or have affair after marriage. It is something which is ridiculous, isn't it? This is an activity, this is a choice of a, or an action which can not only destroy your life but can, can affect other people's lives also. So how can we make it superficial enough to think that women empowerment means having a choice whether to you know, have an affair before marriage or after marriage? Does it really empower you? Just a choice to, to is, is that going to empower you? So real, real women empowerment is something which has to come from a deeper level, from the level of the soul, not just connected to this body. If we identify with this body, then yes, everything that they speak about, maybe it's connected to the body. Women are considered to be deeper sex. Whereas the whole statistics, if you study, you will see that women are more stronger emotionally than men. There are maximum number of suicides in men. Whereas females have comparatively less, though we think about suicide more than men. That's what she said. The females, women think about it a lot, but actually men, actually the higher the statistics show that they have more uh, number of seniors. So this movement such as my choice and this thought process is not coming from a very healthy place. It's a very negative thought. It's coming from a mood of ignorance where we do only what our mind says. My mind, my body, my choice. Isn't that the first line of this video? It's, which means that it is coming from a mood of ignorance where you become like a slave of your mind. But don't you agree that every choice or every action that you do, you have to, it will have a reaction, isn't it? Every action that we do in our life, there will be a reaction. And we, we are responsible for the reaction, isn't it? The consequence of your action, for the consequence of your choices. Everyone has their choice. We all have our choice. We can do whatever we like. Whatever we are discussing today, you are know, you are free to choose whether you want to follow this opinion or agree with me or not agree with me. Right? But we all have to understand it's logical that every choice you make in your life, there will be a consequence. And we are responsible for the consequence of our action. And after discussing so much about what, are the role, what is the role of a gay woman based on our Indian culture and the Vedic culture and such wonderful examples, we have an heritage of such high level or such wonderful qualities of women who have shown in their lives such great level of responsibility and you know, with that kind of heritage behind us, isn't it more that we have to be responsible to agree to this? 
we should be more responsible because we have a background, we are coming from a heritage or a tradition or a culture where women were considered as good as mother. So why should we give it we get in our position? Isn't it? Why should we come down to the level and just come on a more ignorance and think that is women empowerment? Real women empowerment is when a woman can empower other people, other or around them, her, whoever is around her. If she can empower her family, empower her children, that is the power that is there in our hands. Jijabai, she empowered Shivaji Maharaj and he became such a great warrior. Isn't it? That is our history. We have so many examples. So a true empowerment of a woman is when we are able to empower other women. It is said a woman's worst enemy is another woman. Isn't it? Usually women can be the worst enemy of another woman. But we can also be the best friend. We can also empower or help other people. So that is true women empowerment, which is in the mode of goodness. So there are so many examples. In this video, if you see all the values or the belief systems that have been propagated, if it were if it were true, if it would be a real women empowerment or real freedom for the women, we can see that these kind of values in the Western countries or in the West, that is the way of life which the women are following, right? Free culture, free. Uh, you know, relationships and free, they are free, they make their choice and they think that they are free. But what is the result or the consequence of that kind of culture? You can see by the statistics, right? The statistics show that by following this culture, where they are supposedly free to make any choice that they want or do anything that they like, the statistics show that 40 to 50 percent of all women go through divorce, maybe once or maybe sometimes twice in their lives. There is the highest rate of teenage pregnancies and abortions seen in the Western world, and US leads in that. More than 57 percent teenage pregnancies. We see so many suicides amongst these celebrities and not just and very young such as Amy Winehouse, Uber Girl and Whitney Houston. This is all recent. We see so many suicides among the celebrities. So if this culture, this way of life, if they say really empowers a woman, then why is there such kind of statistics? We can judge a thing by its results, right? So we see that whatever is propagated, it is really not satisfying for a woman. It is not empowering such kind of lifestyle. Because it is more irresponsibility rather than responsible choices. So then such kind of, it, it can only destroy the society more. Because the society, everything depends on the woman. Don't you agree? We have power over the family. Everyone, everything we, can, we manage, right? In the house, the children, everything, what they are going to do in the future. So many decisions the women make in the house. From the time that what they are going to eat for breakfast, everything is decided by the woman to the time is me. So you can imagine the society
stands and the biggest figure is the women of the society. If the women are strong, if the women are strong, then the society remains stable and strong and stays united and connected. If a woman thinks that in the name of freedom, they just take responsible and leads their life, you know, having no values or no belief that a uh, value system, then the whole society will crumble. The family structure, the, the future, everything depends on the woman. So it's all the more important that we become responsible. And every choice that we make, we keep in mind that there are so many people dependent on us. So that doesn't have to make you feel, oh, you are burdened by all this. You are talking about responsibility, you are about, you know, fun. But if you go to see, you can really become happy. You can really be happy just by following your feminine energy. Because that's natural for us. That will make you really happy. If it wouldn't be so, there's so much depression amongst women today. It's because they're trying to fight against their original nature and just try to lead an artificial way of life. And when you do something, and that's because of peer pressure. You all are young, you are in college, you must be understanding, experiencing it all the more. What is peer pressure? <coughs> it's trying to conform to some kind of a uh, dressing style or behavior just to become accepted by the, the group, by, the, by your age group or your peer group. And when you don't fit in, that it leads to depression. So we try to be something which we are not. And when we try to do that, that's when you know, we become depressed because it's not natural. So according to Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada has said, giving us a wonderful teaching. As women, if we think we are this body, then we actually limit ourselves. If you want to really truly feel empowered, then you have to understand that you are the spirit soul and not just this body. And the spirit soul is neither male nor female, but it is a servant of God. And we can become so empowered if we just understand that we are spirit soul and we are part of Krishna. We are a part and parcel of Krishna. So we are under his protection and his care. And when we understand that, we will understand that we, are, we can be so powerful. We can make so much difference if we just take shelter of God. And we can become real instruments in the hands of God and help other women or help other people who are whom we can help and make a difference in their life. And this is what we see in the lives of Vedic women such as Draupadi. She was so surrendered to Krishna. And then in the time of her need, Lord Krishna himself came and protected her. And then we see in the life of Kunti or Sita, they are taking complete shelter of the Lord. And they were always protected. Because after all, Prabhupada says in Bhagavad Gita that we may think that we will be protected by our husbands and our family members and our relatives. But they are nothing but fallible soldiers. Political soldiers means they can never be really there when you leave. At the time of death, there is only one person and that is 
Lord, who will be with me. He is the ultimate protector. So as women, if we understand our position as spirit soul on the spiritual platform and surrender to Krishna, we will be truly protected. And we will be guided from within, always, by the Lord Himself to make the right choices, to walk on the path of dharma, and never you know, go away from the path of dharma. This is the true empowerment which will come from within when we take shelter of God. So today, let us all make this decision that if we are born in this woman's body, let us not think that, oh, this is such a bad bargain we have got. It's such a loss. We are restricted. We are there. Because if you think like that, you will restrict yourself. We are like prisoners of our own minds. So we have to free ourselves. Try to broaden your potential. Your real potential comes from within. When you connect with God, when you connect with Krishna, you can actually reach your true potential. And then you will realize that there is so much to do. I can achieve so much. I can help so much. I can serve so much. So this is, let's promise ourselves that we not get completely influenced by the present propagation of what a true woman should be. Hmm? By breaking all the principles of dharma or living a very immoral life, that's not true freedom. That's not true human empowerment. That can only lead to pain and suffering and no frustration. If we really want to empower ourselves, then we need to connect with the real power source. And that is Lord Krishna. We see the examples in our baby, how women have become so powerful just by following the feminine quality of strong chaste chastity and following the Vedic culture of the dharma always. Dandhari, she got so much power in her because she followed that austerity of blindfolding herself just to be chased to her husband, to become equal with him. Because he was blind, she blindfolded herself just so that he should not feel that she is superior. That is such high level of chastity and because of following that she became so powerful, so powerful that just by her vision when she removed the blindfold there was so much power that she could make the whole body of her son Duryodhan into steel. So that's how we can truly become empowered. So, I'm begging. Personally, I try to make my daughter also, uh, she's 17 years old. And from the beginning, I told her that you don't have to live like someone who you're not. You don't have to show, you know. Sometimes we try to be someone else or try to follow some kind of a set pattern or influence by someone else. You have to live your life being honest to yourself always. So she, and she doesn't have to, uh, I told her that you don't have to be better than a man. You can be yourself. You can be a woman. Be a girl. Stick to your nature. And by that, you will become really happy and you will always be peaceful. So we don't have to prove ourselves. 
because we have already been given the best gift of being born as a woman. So we should always be proud of ourselves. That is true self-respect. Self-respect as a woman is the most important thing for a woman. We respect ourselves so that we do not let anyone, any man, you know, exploit us or make us feel that we are not capable or something inferior. Because internally, if you realize that you are part of God, then you are always blessed and you have the best position of being the servant of God or connected to God. So you will be truly empowered that way. Thank you very much. This is what I really wanted to share with you. And I hope that we can have a nice interaction now. If you have any uh, thoughts or feelings which you would like to express, we can have a discussion here. Please feel free. Is there any question or you would like to say something? This is the forum where we can you know, talk to you. Thank you. 
very much. It was a wonderful experience interacting with so many beautiful girls, but I won't be women very soon. Thank you, Matthew, for the wonderful lecture and talk. It was an eye-opening, at least for me, what about you Right? So let us thank Marji by now we chanting in a very small way to thank A few announcements uh, for the new girls. Uh, I would like uh, the new girls who have come for the very first time can we chant to more places? We would like to welcome these girls in a traditional way by now we chanting three times. Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. We pray at the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha Bhagavati that today's day be an auspicious beginning in your Krishna conscious life, and you may and you please keep coming and inspire us uh, with your presence. Kindly be seated. Uh, just once you get the prasad, uh, we want you all to come near the Bhaktivedanta uh, hall which is downstairs. We will get the bricks from Rasika Raga who is standing there near the Karupa. Uh, so you all can collect the bricks from her and uh, that will be uh, nice if you can just go through it. Okay, a uh, few more announcements about the books. Uh, we have good and wonderful books downstairs in the gift shop. There are many other items. You can just go and uh, see what is useful for you. And for the next Chetna, we have next Chetna on 13th of February, which is just a day before Valentine's Day. So, I hope all of you all will come for love for life. And the speaker is Oh, there is Bhatt Sundari Mahaji. If you are a regular speaker, you know she is a wonderful devotee, a wonderful speaker. She is really connecting. Uh, so, if possible, please try to come by 5 o'clock so that we can start our chetna before time and we can have more of Kirtan which all girls like, right? So, now, uh, one more few more there is a Jagannath Rathi Yatra which, which will be on 5th, 6th and 7th of February and it's the 50th anniversary of Jagannath Rathi Yatra. I hope everyone got the passes. You are going to see you can take it when you are just leaving. And then there is a 3 day seminar on Brahmatha Ashram. January 22 to 24 and the timings are 7 to 9 p.m. by Dr. Sanjeevan Deodar uh, and San, that is Sankirtan Das Prabhu and Dr. Vaigavi Deodar. Topics covered are preparation for eating grahas, preparation for entering grahasta ashram. Now, uh, Hanji just now said that everyone of us are girls and we are entering grahasta ashrams. So, kindly uh, attend the seminars, Art of Vegeting uh, Divine Children, Principles of Vedic Parenting, and there is a seminar on Hand of God that is on January 26th and the time is 7.30 am to 2.30 pm and the speaker is this place Bhogavan Prabhu. And to re register for both the seminars, you need to contact the place or you can even email on www.gaschopati.blogsport.in and there is a JOSG which is Journey of Self Discovery and if you are new to Krishna Consciousness if you know more about Krishna Consciousness it's a wonderful course believe it's really a eye changing course so it's from 25th to 30th of this January and it's at Dutch Mohan Prabhu you can even contact the uh, uh, temple reception and there is a drama on Tama. Uh, the drama tickets are available downstairs near the shoe store and the uh, drama is on 13, 14 and 15th of Jan. Uh, the person will be uh, able to explain you the price.
prices and all everything. So kindly register. Thank you. Bye bye. Now let's do Kirtan. Let's do Kirtan. Dancing Kirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 